Well, hello, everybody. This is Richard from uh, Resonant Frequency, the Amateur Radio Podcast, and Linux in the Ham Shack. Uh, we're trying a different method of recording videos at this time. Today, we're going to talk about JT65. Uh, JT65, I was, uh, I, for some time, I've been hearing signals on some of the bands that I knew were digital signals, but I couldn't identify them. And uh, after doing some research and everything else, I found out that the uh, guy that writes the Whisper software also has a suite of programs for doing high-speed meteor scatter, moon bounce, and that kind of stuff. And one of the modes involved is JT65. Now, JT65 has started to get popular on the HF bands. As you heard when we opened up the... Uh, we're listening right now to 20 meters this is, and you can hear the signals going on in the background now JT65 can be run by downloading the WSJT suite from the K1JT website I believe it's at Princeton uh, we'll take a look at the uh, web page for a moment this is it, uh, physicsprinceton.edu, Pulsar, K1JT. Uh, it's easy enough to find. Go on in there and type in K1JT or WSJT or Whisper or whatever, and you should be able to find it without any problems. So this is the main interface for the uh, uh, WSJT software. We're currently in JT65 mode, as you can see here, JT65A, which is what I believe they're running on all the HF bands. As I said before, we are on 20 meters, and there are uh, conversations going on as we speak. Uh, just to give you a lowdown, you see uh, AE5HO uh, being contacted by KB9GFX and R-18 is his signal report. As we watch this along, y'all watch the screen. As we go along, you'll see that uh, the next one should be a triple R from uh, the other way around. Now, unlike most of the digital modes we're using nowadays, this is what my father would have called a gentleman's mode. It takes about seven minutes to make a contact, and they are pretty much rudimentary contacts, uh, meaning that you get on, you exchange a little bit of information, you get back off. Now, the good thing about this is you make a lot of contacts. You can also make contacts in very, very poor conditions. Uh, 10 meters has been down a lot. And I was able to make a 10 meter contact at well nearly 5,000 miles in one of the uh, early experiments with this. Here is where your main stuff goes on. Down here is average, and I'm not quite familiar with that. You can erase all this stuff by clicking the erase and erase this down here by clicking average. But we also have waterfall, and these are what the uh, JT65 signals look like. Give y'all a second to see that. Now you can jump on these signals, and apparently I'm listening to one that's way off the scale here, this green line, which is kind of hard to see. Let's go ahead and center up on, say, this weak signal. One of the benefits of uh, these modes that transmit slower is the fact that you can make contacts in conditions that really wouldn't work with anything that was faster or uh, wider in signal input. So just for the sake of time, because YouTube doesn't really let us have a lot of time, uh, let's run over some stuff really quick. This is your logging information. If you're able to get their grid square in, which is what is sent in the uh, first transmission, it will tell you approximately how far away they are and 
uh, where you would need to point your beam here to uh, zero them in. There's a clock down here in the bottom because JT65, the way it works is you will transmit for 40, I think it's 48 seconds. Then the next station in the next minute will transmit for 48 seconds. And uh, that way y'all work back and forth without tromping on top of each other. It is important to have your uh, computer time as accurate as you can get it. And I'm using Linux here. This is Ubuntu Linux. So uh, it's not hard to set it up to actually check to make sure the time is right quite often and we just we may get to see a whole conversation now there's a CQ from KE1AF in grid square FN41 now the QSOs consist of and this is a guy I've actually gotten the card from already because I haven't uh, haven't worked any JT65 in about a week uh, KB1SUA and when he was hollering CQ I responded with this all this is pretty much automated as you can see there's a uh, button boxes here if you have this turned on have the auto turned on here uh, you will send this message since it's highlighted until you tell it to send a different message or turn it off and apparently we heard nothing in that last transmission if you're watching the clock you'll see that it decodes about every this is a fairly fast machine so it decodes in about three seconds and the next station there uh, or uh, KE1AF should be transmitting now this would be uh, well we jumped away off of him didn't we uh, should be him right here we can tell because there's a column here that says DF and we know that he was at negative 598 of our uh, of the frequency we're on at this time which would put him about right there so y'all go out and check this out the uh, the documentation for it is available on the K1JT website comes in PDF format and it'll tell you how to set the software up and uh, kind of how to use the modes there's a lot of places out on the web where you can go check out the uh, go check it out which will give you some information in fact I found a really good website which I should have had up for this video that has a really good tutorial on working JT65. So with that, we'll go ahead and cut this one short. Uh, Y'all, excuse me, I'm having to record the audio in a separate program than the video, and I hope it works out that way. If it does, then we'll be able to do more more videos like this one. So with that. Y'all go check things out. Have a ball. Enjoy HF. We'll talk to you later.